uh, my intake or my output of this uh, discussion, what we have done already, is really wonderful because you have different ideas and different concepts about this wonderful festival. You know, more than 160 countries, they celebrate Christmas. And some countries, they just don't celebrate Christmas, but they have holidays. Like Pakistan and uh, Jordan, they have holidays, they celebrate holidays. So what my point is this, when we have any festival, when we have any celebration at our home, in our families, we do some decoration. We do buy new clothes. We do decorate our houses. For what? Just to celebrate something, to show people that we are happy. That's what we are doing in uh, at Christmas. We uh, decorate Christmas trees. We decorate our houses, windows, and everywhere you see in, in the UK also and all over the world, people are happy. So the question is, the next question is this, as uh, we have been discussing off and on, can we connect or link? Can we have a link with the, uh, can we make any link with the commercialization or commercial with the festival of uh, Christmas? Because if we take all these rituals, all these things, then there will be a very fake and very, but you, but you can not fake, but very dim, not very uh, charming uh, Christian or Christmas festival. So what would you say, Dr. Paul? Can we take all this commercialism or commercialization from this festival? If we take all these things, can we, what do we have to show the people to the world? Yes, Dr. Paul. Well, yes. You know, commercialization, you know, as much as I hate it, and I think we should separate it. I, you know, it really saddens me when I when I see Santa Claus running down the aisle of a church. Hmm. It, it just really, you know, it, it irks me. I mean, it, it makes me not violently angry, but really, really angry that, that, that we would do these kinds of things. It's really nice to have the children do their little program. But I've just finished, uh, well, I'm finished. I'm in the process of, uh, for those who don't know, I do reading with children, as a, as reading scripture with children uh, every week. And uh, I've been making the questions for the, old, for the Pentateuch, and I've just kind of finished the questions. One thing that you always find, and I think uh, should be how we separate commercialization from uh, the rest of the story is God said and he repeats it if you read the, the, the if you read the Pentateuch he repeats and repeats and repeats I did this whatever it was hardened Pharaoh's heart I did this so that the world would know that it was me and I mean, not and not Israel you know you know he said go to the Go to the land of Canaan. I will I will push people out. And I will do it. And the people will know. The nations around you will know that it is me and not you. And I think that's, you know, if we focus uh, our church stuff on that kind of thinking, on that kind of theology that, you know, the baby was born. Not because of some physical, normal thing, but because Jesus was God. And God wants to do things different. I mean, Elizabeth, you know, and, and, and John the Baptist, they were old. You know, it was impossible. God, God wants that kind of attention, but our churches are not focused not only at Christmas, you know, at, at Easter, you know, at Easter we have Easter eggs and bunnies and you know chocolate and beautiful things. And Christ is almost gone in Easter, except that we have the Hallelujah chorus sung as a choir, and then we go home and eat our eat our chocolate bunnies. But we've lost in our church the center the, the center of Christ as. When Christ, when God does something in your life at salvation, 
Salvation is meet my Jesus, who is the Lord of Lords, and he will change your life. If if you become a Christian and you don't and nothing changes in your life, you didn't meet my Jesus. We have to say, come see Jesus. That's our Christmas. Come see the Jesus, the power of Jesus, the, the, the you know, not only the be your buddy Jesus. Come meet the real Jesus, the one who will change your life, who will give you hope, who is the who who will give you the peace, power, and confidence, as I've always said before, the peace that is beyond understanding. So when you get stressed, you can't pay your bills, you can't buy your food, you know, you, you can't whatever happens, you have a sickness, something happens, you have that peace that the world wants. You have the confidence and the power to move forward in your life because you have God, you have Jesus. He is there. I mean, you know, and what God wants to do in, in our lives and in, in everybody's life individually is that he wants to show that he does things differently because if he doesn't, if he does it conventionally, if he does it within conventional means, I should say, if, if Jesus does things using conventional means, then we say, oh, you know, it was the doctor or it was the medicine or it was, uh, you know, somebody. It was my money. It was, you know, we have, we, we put everything and Jesus is left out. And so our message at Christmas is, you know, everything is what, you know, whether we, we misrepresent it, absolutely. Jesus, our message is Jesus is there. And everything that was done was supernatural. The star, the, the travel, the, the escape, um, Jesus' life, all the way to his resurrection, his ascension, and his coming back. So to me, when I'm reading, now I'm reading the Old Testament, and it, it's like I will do things so that people will know it is me. And how can we sell? How can we separate? We have to focus on that. If we, you know, we give presents, it's empty. It, you know, how many children get a present and it's broken tomorrow, or the batteries run out and nobody replaces them? You know, or uh, if you, those of you in America who listen to, uh, what's that advertisement for that insurance company? Liberty. I really like the Liberty one. I, I like the Liberty one. You know, the little boy gets this yellow box uh, of something, and then his, his brother, or I'm supposing his brother, his brother gets a bike, which is much bigger and nicer. You know, he's so sad because he didn't get exactly what his brother got. Though he got a better present. You know, he kicks the tire and goes out and pouts in the corner. You know, that's how we, that, that's our Christmas with commercialism. Is we have something so much better as Christians, but we pout and kick and, you know, oh, God didn't give us what we wanted this year. You know, what am I going to do? And I just like that advertisement because that shows so much of how Christians uh, celebrate Christmas is we pout we 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 don't give God the glory we don't give Jesus the glory for everything that He's given us we're not thankful because He didn't give us what we wanted or like you know maybe somebody got something better you know their life got better and mine maybe got worse we view. We have to view our Christian life differently. And to do that, we have to separate separate the commercial, the Black Fridays, you know. We have to separate Black Friday from uh, from Christmas altogether. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank you so much, Dr. Paul. Dr. Paul was telling that we have lost the centrality of Christ and centrality of gospel, of the gospels and the message of Christ. Well, uh, uh, let's go to Aris John. He has a lot of things to tell us, and he is thinking very deeply. Uh, well, well, commercialization. 
has uh, Christmas become a commercial event, a commercial festival? What would you say about this? There is a commercialization. Yes, we all believe Americans, they spend $16 billion each year on Christmas trees. $16 billion. And where does this money go? To a place where Jesus is banned, mm. where you cannot worship Jesus. So we are importing a lot of, lot of decorations from China. We are helping China out to build their economy and destroy Americans' economy. From a Christian world, from a Christian place, I don't know still America is, is a Christian country or not, but world belief that America was created by God, you know, the God we trust. So we are sending our money to a country which has, which is antichrist country. Mm. So this is this is how I say that the commercialization is dangerous. Well, in a, in other countries like which they make their own. I, I remember in Pakistan we used to make our own decoration things. You know, we don't go and buy them. But now we are buying all Chinese things. We are supporting China. This what is, I, I just would like to interrupt you because nativity or some uh, like indigenous things, the things that we create ourselves, like in yes, the Philippines sir. and Canada, of course, and Pakistan yeah, and different yeah. countries, people used yeah. to like uh, make their own buntings, own flags and own things and to celebrate yeah. and to... Locally of made, course, yes, yeah. because uh, Paul and your uh, almost understanding is the same because you want to take all these things out of this Christmas festival. So because that is very sanctified and uh, it's a totally, it should be a religious festival, not commercial festival. So let's yeah, go to yeah, Dr. I, I agree that, yeah. that we need these uh, ornaments. We need this all decorations for, to celebrate Christmas or show to other people that uh, this is the message of Christmas. But we have to very, be very careful. Where does Christmas money goes? Okay. I want to, uh, I appreciate Dr. Rao's uh, that uh, comments about uh, the nativity scene. There are so many things which has been misinterpreted, which has been which has uh, been misused, which has been misshown. Yes, because of that, the Christmas message has been destroyed. You know, in in the nativity scene. Hmm. We have uh, shepherds coming up. We have magis coming up. We have animals over there. Jesus is placed in a manger. But this was not the history. This was, it, it's not like that. Jesus was never placed in a, a, in a manger. We call it journey in Pakistan, which is a feeding place for the animals. The manger in Greek is a stall. And the shepherds, which were over there, were not ordinary shepherds. Those, those, they were given one sign that go and find that baby wrapped in a cloth and placed in a stall. So shepherds know where to go. So, they did not ask any question from uh, the angels. Where is the place? They stayed forward, went to Bethlehem. Because they, they knew that once the lamb is born and he is wrapped in the cloth and where is it placed? So Jesus was placed at that place where the other lambs for sacrifice was placed. So all these things has to be corrected. These doctrines has to be corrected. All these messages has to be corrected to convey a right message of Christmas. So the question so, is this, Everest John, we can have a question also. Because mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, uh, it uh, the discussion will go just without any meaningful uh, way or result. So the question is, is who will do that, Doctor Ryu? We have to do that. We have to give. For let's example, go to Dr. I... Ryu, uh, Everest, let's go to Doctor Ryu. Ryu, 
who will do that is uh, dr rio's responsibility paul's responsibility khanna's or me who is responsible for that who are we yes dr rio uh, that's uh, that's something to you know to reflect a lot so who will celebrate christmas correctly yeah that, that's all that's also can can be a question who will and who are celebrating christmas correctly i think an hour among this panel only dr paul is celebrating christmas truly because he <laughs> says take away all this commercialism commercializations out of christmas festival or christmas celebration not a celebration but it's a very very religious uh, event the uh, let's go to dr rio so that she can she was telling something yeah who will and who are celebrating okay uh i think we don't have the answer for that uh unless people will change like uh we need to nurture the you know spiritual formation for everyone so we need to transform transformation is important um uh, because that's already a status quo mm. that's why <laughs> it's been happening so we cannot change automatically like okay this is the truth but who will listen to you then maybe commercialization uh is a tool to just let people know that there is jesus there is uh we are celebrating the birth of jesus it's important to let them know oh we have jesus and uh yeah still so, so to correct how to celebrate christmas well I don't have the answer how to celebrate correctly. So then let's go to Asam Khanna because he has very positive, positive response and positive understanding of these all these commercialism, commercialization, uh, like Black Friday or uh, all these things. He has some positive understanding. Yes, please. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I I respect you know everybody's angle and you know every picture has two sides on it. let me say something here okay forget about the christmas tree and everything else for example they ask me to preach on sunday or christmas day and i go and start preaching preaching the gospel preaching the birth of christ but the reason behind if the reason behind is my own fame or to get more money from the people even my preaching is not correct at that point so we need to the main point is the savior should be the reason for the season okay he he is the main reason so we need to focus that you know okay the savior is the reason now let me get to the, our decorations and celebrations okay there are many countries in the middle east you know in pakistan you know in some parts of pakistan and afghanistan people cannot have you know christmas tree or ornaments or you know singing so we don't celebrate jesus birth because of these lights we do these lights because jesus is born we need to turn it the other way around okay we we can have little bit celebration but the point is to what extent we go you know if it's a christmas tree at home it's beautiful but if you have a competition that you want 2000 dollar christmas tree it should be 12 feet better than your whole street then there is a problem but if you just want to decorate a christmas tree want to make a little you know a uh, nativity scene underneath you know want to give gifts uh, and you know somebody mentioned santa claus santa claus is not there it is your parents who are putting gifts in there you know we are we are replacing we are not only replacing jesus we are replacing our parents we are not thankful to them you know to the kids we are teaching them oh thank to santa you know santa came no santa did not come 
Santa has a different story in Germany and Santa has a totally different story in USA. You know, German Santa Claus is not going to Alaska and, uh, you know, getting those reindeers. And, you know, uh, even the season is different, you know, you know, and now, you know, in different books, they have their names. Sorry. So let me get back to the point. Somebody described the word joy for Christmas. So they said joy. J. Jesus first. O. Then come others. Y. And yourself comes in the end. If that is our, you know, goal, that Jesus will remain first in Christmas, and then we will serve others and keep ourselves in the end, then we can have real joy. One of the scholars, I forgot his name, he was a, a Second World War veteran. Somebody asked him how we should celebrate Christmas. He said, we speak one sentence on Christmas all the time. If we change one word in that, you can have the spirit of Christmas. And the people asked, okay, what is that sentence? He said, usually on Christmas, we ask, what did you get? He said, change one word in that. Instead of asking, what did you get? Say, what did you give on Christmas? And then he said, God gave his son and son gave his life. So Christmas is all about giving. Yes, people buy a lot of presents. Yeah, they give those presents to their loved one, which is not a bad thing. But again, when it is commercialized, okay, I gave you a gold ring. Now I am expecting a necklace. Then it's a trade. It's not a gift. So we need to see, you know, the main gift is Savior. And we are happy that we received that gift. And now we are sharing the gift of love in the form of songs, in the form of gifts. And this is how, you know, we celebrate. And when, you know, these, uh, I, I have been receiving, you know, from my peers. Last time, you know, on Christmas, they gave me, you know, ma, a little bag of blueberries, you know, three, four dollars. They know I like blueberries. You know, they just gave me, it was just a loving gesture and I accepted it, you know. Uh, my boss asked me, he said, hey, you know, I need a shaving kit and I just need that $2 one. So if you plan to give me a gift, give me that, you know, $2 shaving kit, I really, you know, like it. So the main purpose is if love is shared and it is not commercialized. Then little gifts are okay. Cards are okay. You know, according to my opinion, you know, you, you can. So, and, and you know, three. But when we do all these, he should be the reason. Not that these things comes first and, you know, he comes in the end. That, that is a problem. All right. I would like to uh, respond to that. I think uh, with the commercialization, uh, to me, uh that would be a tool a good tool to uh represent that this is the season that we have to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ so in other words commercialization is an inclusive way of celebration of christmas Yeah, yeah, you're right, Dr. Rao. Dr. Bashir, turn yeah. your mic on. Sorry, my, yes, uh, it was off. I, I, Did you put yeah, Dr. My Paul, mic off? I would like to ask you something. Uh, commercialization and uh, Christianity, or Christian, Christmas especially, because, uh, you know, everywhere, whenever we see, when the festival comes, or when this season comes, we see Christmas trees, are being decorated or decorated Christmas trees all over cities around us at our homes. So there is some festivity. There is something uh, very marvelous or some extra or act, uh, thing has been happened. That's why it shows something. 
a big event behind this. So, Dr. Paul, in two sentences, uh, what about uh, what would you tell something our uh, viewers about this program and about Christmas commercialization? Is it important or not? Of course, uh, in a religious way, it is not important at all. We don't believe in religious, uh, sorry, material things. We believe in divine things or in uh, God's things and righteousness. Of course, we have talked a lot on different issues. But uh, I would like to ask Dr. Paul, commercialization, Christmas, and about this program. One thing we find in all the characters of Christmas, worship. Yeah. Worship is the center of our, should be the center. Yeah. Shepherds, the wise men, and even the wise men came and, you know, that ruler feigned worship, but worship, they came and worshiped. That was it. Worship is number one in one word. Christmas is worship. And whether we, you know, we, we commercialize it. If you can commercialize it and, and bring worship as a as a core, uh, you do what most people can't. Because worship and commercialization, there's just like an oxymoron. So and this kind of program allows a lot of different views, a lot of uh, exploration into, into uh, core values. And I think it's a great program. We should uh, continue. You know, Christmas is not December 25. Christmas is all year. Yes. Thank you so much. I mean, it's it, we, we try to celebrate it, but we have the Rose Bowl and we have a few other uh, cotton bowls and other football things that are almost important as Christmas. That's if you're American. But we think Christmas is a one day and then Boxing Day, which is in America celebrated. And, you know, you give that extra turkey to your neighbor but christmas is an everyday relationship with jesus christ come meet jesus at christmas if we meet jesus at christmas we worship like the like the shepherds and the, and the wise men came later when we meet jesus we come to worship if that's our christmas message if that's our christmas attitude it will change the whole next year in our life. The key, so. to, the key to blessings in the Old Testament, what you know, a lot of hard things in the Old Testament, the rules were tough. But you know, God said, obey, obey, obey. If you obey, I will move the world for you. Get back to worship and obedience. Thank you so much. Actually, uh, these this program will not change the world. But this will this can change somebody. This can change me or the people who are here around us. Those who maybe somebody will listen to this program and will change his life. Uh, of course, we can't change the world, but God can. Mm -hmm. The message of Christ is the same forever and ever, now and forever. So it is not like uh, some people may think, oh, what are they doing? This is just a wastage of time. No. We are not wasting our time. We are thinking and rethinking because Christianity is a living religion. It's a real living. We believe in uh, living God because that's why we have to think over it again and again. As Paul said, that Christmas is not for on, on 25th December only. It is forever. For whole year is a Christmas. My Christmas, your Christmas. So we have to convey the message of Christ the way people like. No. The way God says us the way he commands us. So uh, finally, uh, as Paul said, this is a wonderful program that, that we have to, because, you know, I would like to request uh, all of you, all of us like that we have one panel and this panel will go on different topics. And I would like to and really appreciate it because uh, you gave time, you spent your time and you spared your time, very precious time for this wonderful program on a wonderful event. So, Everest, what do you think about this program? This is this is well planned, well organized, and wonderful messages from different point of view. Dr. Paul has a different point of view. 
Asam Khanna has a different point of view. I mean, different uh, thinking. I don't say that they are against uh, the Christmas. I had a different point of view. Dr. Rao has a different point of view. Wonderful combination of speakers and thoughts. Just, I want to say a few words at the end. On, on start of Christmas, Christmas festivals, Christmas festivals, there is always a war going on in the media. We call it war on Christmas. So they want to, the, the liberals, the antichrist group, they want to downsize Christmas and its message. For example, I, I yesterday I opened my TV and there was a history channel going on, and the title of that program was Historical Jesus. What is this historical Jesus? I am disturbed. I am upset to see this word historical Christmas, yeah, historical Christ. Christ is not historical. He is a living Christ. He is from the beginning to the end. So we are trapped mm. by the liberals. Yeah, we right. are trapped mm. by these ideas that Jesus was historical. You know, he, he has a history. As Dr. Paul said, that he is from the beginning. He is now, he is present, he is alive, he is a living Christ. We celebrate the birth of a living person. Mm. We do not celebrate the birth of a dead person. So the Christmas story is a real story and, and a, a true story. I just want to speak only for one minute. Let's go to the place from Jesus came, heavens. We are celebrating on earth, the, the Christmas celebration, Christmas day, the birth of Jesus Christ. There is one celebration going on in the heavens. That celebration was done by the angels. When it was time, I am just, you, you know, realizing what was happening. When it was time for Jesus to come down on the earth, he before that, he was sitting on a throne. He was sitting there on a chair, having crown on his head. Father asked him, this is the time to go. He got up, took his robe off, put it on the chair, put his sword off, took it off, hang mm. on, on a wall, his crown, took it off, put it on the table which was in front of him, took his all cloths off and just covered himself with a cloth mm. and start walking. Father was looking at him. Father was worried that he has to go to that place which is, you know, not a right place for my son. But he says, Father, don't worry, I'll come back. He's walking, walking, walking. Angels are covering him from both sides. Angels were worried. He looked at the angels and said, make some more mansions. Look at people over there. I will bring back them. You need to build more mansions. So the purpose of Jesus coming to earth, the purpose of God, you know, coming in, in a body was to take his people back from where he came. This is the core Thank you so much. message of Christmas. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so uh, Asam Khanna. Last, finally, because we're going to finish now soon. Uh, we have some last moments, some two or three uh, minutes or five minutes. So in two minutes, what, do you, what would you say about this uh, program? So Dr. Paul mentioned uh, shepherds. Hmm. I just wanted to say, you know, during that time, you know, Ma, yes, there were some shepherds, you know, but they're especially, uh, you know, I could say set apart for this purpose. But generally in Jewish community, uh, you know, the Pharisees or the other upper religious class, they did not like him because of their profession. 
And although in the new, in the Old Testament, you know, many prophets uh, were shepherds, even Jesus called himself good shepherd. Uh, Amos, prophet Amos said, you know, he is a shepherd. But in that time, uh, as the system has changed, people don't look down upon them. And uh, some of the historians say that uh, after uh, lepers, they were the lowest class. Anyhow, the message of Christmas goes to them first. So are we reaching to the poor and needy on Christmas? That is first take, you know, I yes, take from very good. Excellent. The second one, you know, what Dr. Paul said, you know, they went and saw Jesus. They made an effort to go and see Jesus. Okay. So they heard the message at night. They did not say, oh, okay, let's have a little sleep. And, you know, in the morning when we get up, you know, we'll go. No, they went in haste. Scriptures say they went in haste quickly. They not only went in haste, they saw Jesus. They were the first missionaries. They went and they started telling people, hey, the savior of the world is born, you know, but they were poor, you know, uh, not from a high class. So people did not pay, you know, attention any attention to them. But the main point which shepherds saw Jesus. So we talked about commercialism. Do we see Jesus in Christmas? Or we just see the toys, the decoration, clothes. But do we see Jesus? This is the main thing. If we see Jesus, if he's the first He's the reason, then that is the Christmas. And I appreciate, you know, this has been a wonderful program. You know, Ma, Canada, Philippines, Pakistan, America, New York, my little Arizona. <laughs> so and we UK, all of gather course. together from, you know, United, UK, the yeah, host. United Kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> so we <laughs> gather around the world, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, as a disciple or followers of Jesus Christ. So this has been a great program. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you very much. That's, I think, big bondage and that's one uh, unity but that has united us because we are uh, Christian, first of all. We believe in one God. We believe in one Jesus Christ. So that's why we are here united. And finally, uh, Dr. Rio, what would you say about program? Just one or two minutes, please, because I know you are a professor and you can uh, speak hours and hours, but uh, we don't have time much now because Khanna has to go and I have to go to church as well. Yes, please, because Thanks. here is nine now. Yes, Dr. Ryu. Yeah, okay. Uh, all I can say is we are all healers. We can heal this broken world. So, yeah, we can focus on... Uh, we can focus on the message of Christmas. We bring out the uh, the message of love. We bring out the message of righteousness to reconnect people back to Jesus, uh, to God. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's about a relationship, mm -hmm. nurturing that relationship. And I think this program is, yeah, is, it is a good avenue. Thank you so much. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for this uh, wonderful program, program that you spared some time, not some time, but a long time for this program. And I'm very happy. I'm appreciated for this, your participation in this program, uh, conveying the message of Christ at Christmas. Dr. Paul Friesen, Alvarez John from the U.S., uh, and uh, doc, uh, Dr. Rio from South Korea, Dr. Paul from South Korea, Arizona from uh, from Arizona, Asam Khanna. Thank you very much for coming on this program. So, you know, this program is really, really wonderful. And I learned so many things. The festival really commemorates the birth anniversary of Jesus Christ. But the message is very, very wonderful. And it is uh, the son of God we celebrate his birth, the birth of righteousness, the birth of love, the birth of hope, 
the birth of love, love as I said already. That's what uh, the message of Christmas is. 